Today I'm doing an altimeter accuracy and reliability test using three different devices here and a few different programs. Now the first device here I'm using is my iPad, but this is not specifically just for an iPad. You could use it for the iPhone as well. But this is an altimeter barometer app, and you can use this to tell barometric pressure and also altitude if you configure it. And over here we have the Casio watch. Uh, and the link for any one of these items or products such as the apps here will be in the link below if you're interested. But this Casio watch here is also using a barometric pressure sensor just like the iPhone and iPad have built into them. And it's the same deal. It'll tell a barometric pressure and when that barometric pressure changes it also changes the altitude. So you will have to actually calibrate the watch just like you'd have to calibrate this program as well because it does not use GPS. Uh, over here we have the iPhone. And I have two different aviation apps here. Uh, this one is called PPGPS, and this one over here is called Fly Sky High. I know you can't really see it on the camera very well. That's not really important to what I'm talking about at the moment. But these two apps here will use GPS and uh, the internal barometric pressure sensor to tell altitude. So what I'm going to be doing here is driving to a location and then driving to another location which is higher in altitude and I'm going to use Google Earth to also compare the altitude as well as uh, GPS, a different GPS app on the phone to tell the altitude. Uh, and I will compare all those together. I know at my particular location right now I'm about 1190 feet. Um, as you can see on the watch here this is calibrated right now. And I've compared that to topography maps, and I've also compared it with GPS, and that is accurate. I'm about 1,190 feet or so above sea level at this location. So now I'm going to get into talking about uh, the Google Earth, and there's some stuff on Google Earth that you probably didn't know, and it's amazingly accurate. So I'm going to get into showing you that right now. Okay, what we're looking at here is Google Earth, and you can see my cursor in the middle here, and right down the bottom of the screen here you see how it shows elevation that is height above sea level now this is the back corner of my house and uh, the, the ground basically and where I have my pointer right now is 1198 feet above sea level now if I move my cursor over to where the shrub is you see how it goes up to 1201 I know for a fact that that shrub is five feet tall and over here, if we scroll my cursor over, see how it still says 1,198 feet? Right if I move it over to my gutter, you see how that number went up to 1,206? That's crazy because I know for a fact that my gutter is eight feet off the ground, so that's um, very, very close. And also, if I move this over a little bit, if I move, you see how I have a sloped roof? Well, I mean, I guess everyone has sloped roofs. But if I move the cursor up there, you can see how the elevation changes all the way up to the peak of that roof. So that's pretty amazing to me. But what I'm getting at is right at my driveway right here, it shows 1,195 feet. And whether or not that's an exact measurement, it's, really, it's pretty darn close. So I've compared that with GPS as well. So this uh, is not using GPS, this is using um, actual measurements taken with a satellite at least I'm pretty sure because I don't know how else you would get that measurement unless it's just using something from photos and shadows but that's incredibly accurate if you're just doing something like that so anyways now I'm gonna get into talking about um, a few things about how the barometric pressure sensor works in the devices versus how GPS works so now I want to talk about the difference between a device that uses barometric pressure to determine altitude versus GPS and why this is important. Um, accuracy and reliability are two different things. I'm going to explain that and why a GPS is not reliable but also very accurate. But an altimeter is not necessarily always going to be accurate but much more reliable. I know that sounds confusing, just bear with me. But if you already understand how this stuff works, Go ahead and click the time in the video here so you can skip ahead and just skip all this educational stuff. So for those of you who don't know, airplanes mainly use a barometric pressure sensor to determine the altitude versus GPS. And that's because GPS can have a significant error margin. 
So they don't use a device that's exactly the same as this watch here. Obviously, their device, uh, their devices are a little more sophisticated than this, but uh, it's basically the same concept, same principle. So what I want to show you here right now is the barometric pressure, 28.15. That is not sea level. That is this location I'm at right now. And if this number here, 0.15, if that changes and goes to, say, 0 0.20, which is only a little bit, a very, very small amount, uh, that's amplified through the altitude. So this is showing altitude right now. It says 1,200 feet. Uh, this location is actually quite a bit closer to 1,190. It did fluctuate a little bit since I've been doing this video. But that could change the altitude by as much as 10 feet, uh, just 0 0.05 on the barometric pressure. So as you know, when weather systems like high fronts or high, high pressure systems, low pressure systems, when they move in, when you, when you get rain or whatever, um, barometric pressure changes by quite a bit. And when that number changes on the watch, it's going to also change the altitude. So if you don't calibrate this uh, every time you actually want to use it to a known reference, then it's not going to give you an accurate altitude. Um, however, if you don't adjust this on this particular watch, if you don't actually adjust this number, although the altitude right here might be wrong, you can also use this number here. So you can look at that and or you can look at this. So if you go up or down in elevation, you can just do some math and, and subtract or add as needed. However, it's going to be a lot easier if you actually uh, calibrate it. But anyways, what I'm getting into here is this is going to be more reliable uh, because it doesn't have an error margin such as GPS so long as it's calibrated. Uh, this can give you a very accurate and reliable reading so long as you do calibrate it point of use. But I'm going to get into talking about GPS and why that's accurate, but not necessarily reliable right now. So for those of you who don't know, the way GPS actually works is that your device, whether it be your phone or a standalone GPS unit, is actually doing the calculations on where your position is. It is not, re, it is not communicating with the GPS satellites, and the GPS satellites are not telling where, are not telling your unit where it is. Um, your device is merely just receiving a signal from the satellites, is not actually sending anything back out. So the way that this works is that all the GPS satellites are configured to the world atomic clock down to the nanosecond, and they're all synchronized with each other. And I'm not going to get into too much detail about how this actually works specifically, but it has to do with the speed of light and the signal coming from one direction and another direction. And what happens is, is when you're driving along and you're going past trees and buildings and it's a cloudy day or you're partly cloudy, uh, when light travels through a medium, or just this plane blocked by something, obviously it's going to either not go through it or it's going to travel slower through it, such as like clouds. And as you're moving along, you probably notice if you've ever used a GPS device that sometimes it puts you in a different position than you actually are. And this is basically called uh, an error margin. Uh, that's happening because it's losing a signal from one satellite or it's receiving a signal at a different time than it's supposed to be receiving that signal from one of the satellites. So this is why GPS is not reliable because it can be off by as much as several hundred feet at a moment. And it might stay that way for a while. It really depends on the situation. But that's why a GPS uh, is not good for determining your altitude reliably. Although if your device is out in the open, not inside the house, not inside of a car, and just sitting there out in open air uh, and has clear view of the sky, and it's not moving, the, usually the altitude readout on your GPS device is going to be very, very accurate. So now we're going to go ahead and get into this test, uh, which you've all been waiting for, and see uh, kind of the comparison between all the different devices. All right, for the sake of not making this video too long, I went ahead and did the test, and I'm just going to show you the results and go over them with you. So I try to make this as easy as possible to understand, and the reason why I did this test is because I fly a paraglider and I want to know if I can rely on and trust a certain altimeter, whether it be a watch or using my iPhone. Um, so anyways, what you're looking at here in the center is the same picture I showed earlier. And if you remember, I talked about Google Earth and just putting your cursor over a certain area on the land, uh, especially when you're zoomed in, it will show you at the bottom uh, right hand of the screen the eleva elevation uh, above sea level. So in this map you're here seeing where I started my drive and then ended my drive, this, this is just a location I chose because I know there's a, 
a big elevation change. And when I initially did this, I was very zoomed in on the map and I chose a very specific spot on the street here and a specific spot in a parking lot over here. So you're just seeing it zoomed out to kind of give you a, just an idea. So what you're looking at here with this number on the screen is actually, uh, that's the level that the Google Earth said it was when I just put my cursor over that spot. Same thing with over here. And that is a 320 foot, 321 foot difference between these two locations in elevation, this being the higher one. Um, so this is the very interesting part is that the, none of these devices gave any kind of discrepancy uh, or inaccuracy. So here you can see over here I started uh, at this spot and I used GPS on my iPhone and loca uh, located that spot at 921.5 feet above sea level right here. And that matches up almost with what the Google Maps said, you know, within a couple feet. So this basically, it doesn't even matter. It's close enough. And then also on the barometric altimeter watch, I also was doing the test with, you can see right here, that it was 920 feet. Now I didn't change that. Uh, I drove from my house to this location and that's what it said it was. That was after I calibrated. So that's also interesting that it, it worked right off the bat without having to do any further calibration. Now I drove over to this location, the finished spot, and you can see right here, the GPS then I said I was then at 1241.14 feet which is a 319.6 foot difference between this spot. So you can see that very closely matches up with these numbers on the screen. Also the watch says 1240 feet. So that's, this is not using GPS whatsoever. This is just air pressure, remember, uh, barometric pressure. And you can see how closely that matches up with this from the start and the beginning there. Very, very interesting. And it shows you right here at the top of the watch and this is kind of why I have my phone. I'm just recording my screen like this so you can see this a little bit closer for those of you who are viewing this on a smaller screen. 325 foot altitude difference. Um, that is close enough to this number, this number, and this number that you can basically say it's, it's not significant. It is a margin of error, to, uh, a normal tolerance, I should say. And this is the barometric altimeter app I used on my phone. That also shows a 300, basically a 325 foot difference um, from the start point. So that lines up with that. And then you have these two apps here, the Fly Sky High and the PPGPS. Now I wanna take a second to talk about this. Uh, both of these are basically showing within the same kind of tolerance level. You got a 325 foot difference with Fly Sky High, 327.3 with PPGPS. The difference between these two apps here um, the PPGPS, you can either choose to look at your altitude above sea level or you can zero this number out on the screen uh, and that will actually um, tell you your altitude uh, above the ground level from your takeoff location. And this is where the Fly Sky High app differs because remember this is in my car, I'm not flying anything and I, I had to do it in my car to be able to do all this accurately and controlled. So. The way that this one works is, I just added this on here where it says 325 foot difference. Um, you can see that there because I just kind of cut it out from another screen that was within the app. But you don't see that on the main screen when it shows you height above ground. And this says 13 feet above sea level, or I'm, I'm sorry, above ground. And you can see that's nowhere near the 327.3. And the reason that is, is because that is showing you in the app the actual height above the ground because the map that it uses, it takes the altitude from the terrain and matches it with the GPS. And it basically does a little bit of math and tells you uh, per second, your altitude above the ground over that location. So that is not your, that is not showing um, that this is inaccurate. This is just showing that uh, there's basically a 13 foot amount of inaccuracy uh, from when I drove from one location to the other. So if anything, it just says that it's close enough. But in, in all uh, comparison, it still shows that I had a 325 foot height difference uh, in the app in the, further, in the details later on. So it's very, very accurate. Um, all of these devices that I used, all within like perfect range of each other to be able to say that any one of these is uh, reliable enough to use for uh, 
any kind of altimeter for aviation purposes, except for what I talked about earlier with the with using GPS is that this number here you're seeing was because I had the phone sitting on the dashboard. If I pulled the phone off of the dashboard underneath away from the windshield, these numbers would start to shift up and down. Um, so those numbers there are basically in perfect case scenario. So if there's any kind of blockage from the sky, i.e. the roof or your car, uh, you're definitely not going to get uh, a very accurate number. So I'm showing the best case scenario. However, if you were using these for aviation and you were using it for paragliding, you're not going to have anything above you to really throw that off except for your glider. But that's probably going to give you a close enough um, readout. So I just want to show that for those of you wondering if maybe if your uh, altitude on your smart devices works well enough, if it works for flying on uh, paramotor, uh, or if you can trust the, what the Google map says, or you can trust your GPS, or if you can trust, trust an altimeter watch. This basically shows you right here that it is uh, very trustworthy. However, what I talked about earlier, remember the most reliable thing is gonna be your altimeter watch, and the most accurate thing is gonna be the for point of use, uh, so you don't have to do any calibration, is going to be your GPS. But the altimeter watch, you'll have to calibrate to every time you use it to make sure that it's giving you a close enough reading for when you're flying. So that was my test there. Uh, it was, I guess it was kind of fun doing it. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.